Welcome to a pack-filled edition of City, a full half hour from beginning to end. First, join us for a small journey to the Santa Barbara wine country for the harvest of 1997, followed up by celebrity party at Crew Station, and a trip across the world to Rostov on Don in the heart of the new Russian Federation, a real Russian city. Don't leave, City is next. Lord, we gather this day to give thanks for the fruit of these vines. From the earliest years of humankind, bread and wine were among the stable ingredients of life. At the wedding feast of Cana in Galilee, you saved the embarrassment of a couple by changing water into wine. As the poet says, the creator looks at his creature, the water, and the water blushed. In the letter of St. Paul to Timothy, he tells us, no longer drink only water, but use a little wine for the sake of your stomach and for your frequent ailments. Lord, as the harvesting of these grapes of the vine vineyard, bless the grapes, May the wine of these grapes be excellent vintage. And we make this prayer in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hi, I'm Rebecca Blackwell, and welcome to City. This week, City tours the harvest, the harvest of the grapes up in Santa Barbara. And we've arrived here at Sunstone Vineyards and Winery, and Brian Rice, who is one of the owners here, is going to join me right now. And we're going to talk about what happens in the harvest up here and what times of the year you should be coming up and enjoying all of the tasting and the Santa Barbara wines. And here comes Brian now. Brian, join me right here. I just did an intro to the show, and, uh, and I've introduced you, and I'd like to find out where are we here as on the map as coming from L.A.? Well, the San Ynez Valley is about a two-and-a-half-hour drive, um, about a half, a half hour over the hill from Santa Barbara County. So if you're in downtown Santa Barbara, it's about a half-hour to 40-minute drive. Well, one of the first places that we've arrived at here is Sunstone, and uh, so give us a story about Sunstone. It's a beautiful vineyard from what I can see and where we're going to tour today. When I first moved here uh, about seven years ago, there was only a handful of wineries, and it's really been booming, as you probably know, with the wine industry's uh, economic boom. Um, so we're finding that uh, just recently there's up to 42 wineries located up here, and of that, over 30 have tasting rooms, which you can visit. Now, Sunstone, of course, is one of the ones that has a tasting room, and what a beautiful, it looks like a ranch. It's a, like a rancho or something. Uh, tell us about it. Well, it was designed to kind of um, complement the wine. Um, all of the, the plants that are planted around the winery are French, typically. French lavender, rosemary, and things like that. Um, but it's all designed really to mimic or feel as if you're in the south of France, along the Mediterranean. Oh, and of course you've got the rolling hills and mountains around here. How big is your vineyard here, and what kind of wines are you producing? Well, uh, we're known for Merlot. Uh, we do, uh, just because of the climate and uh, the geography here, we grow Merlot very well. But Santa Barbara County in general is known for Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. But because we're further removed from the ocean, we have a bit more of a warmer mesoclimate. So we're, we're growing the Rhone Valley grapes, uh, such as Viognier and Syrah and Merlot, and uh, Cabernet Sauvignon and Cabernet Franc are the Bordeaux grapes which we grow. You're having your own party here today, which was like uh, your opening day for your harvest here. And uh, describe what everyone's doing today here at Sunstone. Okay, we have a wine club. Um, and there's about 500 of them that uh, get involved in this uh, every year. We have events on weekends where they're allowed to come up and uh, enjoy lunch with wine and taste many different barrel samples. And uh, then, of course, we had a stomp party today because we are at harvest. And we picked, actually picked an acre of grapes, picked a Merlot today. And we brought the grapes in and had Father Gerald from the San Inez Mission uh, actually bless the grapes. And then they went ahead and started stomping away. And they made their own wine today. They learned how to make wine for the first time. Uh, what hours is your uh, wine tasting open here? Uh, every day, 10 to 4, except 
uh, New Year's Eve and Christmas. And just a description then before we leave you uh, as to how to get from Santa Barbara, what freeway or what's the best route to get up to Sunstone so you can really enjoy this area? Uh, typically I recommend the 101 to the Highway 246 through Solving because there's a lot of interesting shops and activities along that road. Highway 246 is, uh, extends all the way through Solving and Buellton and leads up to San Inez, which uh, we're here in San Inez Valley along Refugio Road. A buy-in? Well, we're enjoying ourselves and we're touring around here and uh, yours is our first stop, so we're really glad that we're here. Not only are we in the heartland of the wonderful grapes of Santa Barbara County, but we're also amidst wonderful fresh fruits and vegetables. And Brendan Meeker, who is with the Rancho Santa Barbara Marriott, sitting right smack dab right here in the center of this wonderful wine country, is joining me right now to talk about food and wine and the Marriott. And welcome to our show. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, this area is very... Um Phenomenal is a word I would use. Um, you're two hours outside of L.A., you're about four hours outside of San Francisco, and you would never imagine that you would find a hotel like this, a restaurant like this, in this area. Um, and it's very unique. It was one of the reasons I chose to come all the way out here um, from the East Coast. And the reason was with the chance of the fresh vegetables and the great wineries, um, the Santa Barbara wineries are probably going to be some of the best wineries in the world in the next from now to the next 10 years. Well, I see some beautiful things in front of me here, and so I think now's a good time to just talk about, as the executive chef here at the Rancho Santa Barbara Marriott, what are some of the things that are on your mind in terms of serving food? And by the way, we are in a beautiful restaurant here, the Jockey Club. It's just a gorgeous restaurant. Oh, this is a wonderful place to dine and have a good um, culinary experience. Um, one, we work on having the finest servers and the um, best staff to serve this food. I mean, if you do not have qualified people taking care of our customers, um, the food you know, it depends. You know, you have to really have a really good staff. Now, but the food that we have and what I pride myself in is always making sure it's fresh, um, very colorful, very eye appealing, so everybody will have a culinary experience. That's one of my things. This right here, we do basic things. We have our California cob salad, um, a couple different other things. Like over here, we have our fried artichokes in a borzen cream sauce. I mean, people go, oh, fry, but then they taste this and they go with the different flavors of the cornbreading and stuff. They're like, this is something that we're striving in here at our hotel different flavors not too too extreme but basic enough to cleanse one's palate with all the wine that they're having in our area well speaking and getting back to the wine which we're going to be doing a lot of on this show you as i had introduced in the beginning are sitting here with all the expectations you can think of in a marriott right in the middle of the wine country and it just is a great place to start off and explore the wine trail so to speak and uh... do you send people off with picnic baskets or what do you do here at the hotel to tie in with the wine story our entire front desk staff um, one of the things that uh, i decided that we need to do was have them all go out to the wineries so they could tell everybody about the wineries and things like that and one of the things was oh, that's great. yeah one of the things was they told me we need something to eat out there so we did a real nice picnic box lunch now that's one of our main things you know and we go off of what they did and so our staff is very familiar with the wineries um, at the same time so is our restaurant staff all the people are local so they all know of the area and I'm trying to become more local every day so by seeing people and talking at the area well, it's the Rancho Santa Barbara Marriott, and it's right here in the heartland of all the Santa Barbara County wineries. You can explore, and you can make this your home base, and we are going to now meet with some other people here at the at the Marriott who are going to tell us about some of your rooms and unique jacuzzis, which we're going to take a look at. Oh, so, uh, so it's a beautiful hotel. It's a great place for all of you uh, Angelinos to come up here and experience the harvest of the grape, and thank you. Thank you very much. We've just met with the chef, Brendan Meeker, here at the Rancho Santa Barbara Marriott. And now we're going to learn more and more about the Marriott here in this area. And we're meeting with Susan Toy now. And Susan, we want to know about your space here and what you have and what you offer. Well, thank you, Rebecca. It's a pleasure to have you here. Well, being uh, nestled in the Santa Inez Valley here, you have all the uh, expectations of a full-service Marriott. And we have some unique contributions to the area. We are um, just minutes away from many of the local wineries 
and uh, we have uh, bicycles for rent where you can just take a um, ro road trip up to the uh, wineries and we have uh, packages that are available for uh, vacation travelers that are coming up from the Los Angeles area. We're just a hop, skip, and a jump from the Santa Barbara area. So we have uh, more moderate rates than you'll find in the uh, immediate Santa Barbara area. And being just about 40 minutes of a drive, you can come and relax. We have uh, some wine packages that offer a welcome bottle of uh, one of the local wineries here. And uh, it also offers a full breakfast for two. So uh, you can enjoy the pleasures of that. And uh, a few of our rooms offer a uh, more romantic style. We have uh, suites that have a heart-shaped hot tub jacuzzi. So if you're feeling a little bit relaxing, and uh, you can enjoy the uh, services there. Where we do have about 12,000 square footage of meeting facilities for the business traveler and the corporate uh, retreats, where you can just uh, escape to the valley. And uh, we have 149 rooms with uh, 27 suites, just uh, luxurious accommodations for relaxing. You can sit poolside with the outdoor pool and jacuzzi, as well as a tennis court, and all the uh, full-service amenities you'd come to expect at a uh, Marriott. Thank you for telling us about the Marriott. Bye. Goodbye. As you can see, we're enjoying the harvest right firsthand out here in the vineyards at Zaka Mesa Winery. And Dan Gears, who is the winemaker, is standing beside me right now. And we're right in the thick of it here, aren't we, Dan? We really are, Rebecca. This is an exciting... <laughs> you can't get any closer to these grapes than we are now. Absolutely not. The pickers are behind us and their fingers are flying. It's a great harvest and this is a great day to be picking grapes. Well, I heard the head foreman here saying that within one month it's all done in a very short time. It's actually a very compressed period of time that we pick the grapes. Well, we're here in Santa Barbara County and uh, we're visiting and uh, celebrating the harvest of the grapes this year up here. I understand that Santa Barbara is particularly suited for the grape growing because of the moisture in the ocean and maybe you can elaborate on that and tell us some of the reasons why this land is particularly good for the grapes. Well, it's one of the first regions, Rebecca, that has been discovered scientifically as a superior grape growing area. It was pointed out by the University of California back in the late 1960s who noticed that we have ocean fogs that come in almost on a daily basis uh, through our no east and west running mountain ranges and this brings in the maritime influence that cools off the climate here sufficient to grow high quality wine grapes. Now bringing that right back home to the Zaka Mesa winery, uh, I understand that in addition to that that you are growing uh, and producing the kinds of wines that are particularly adapted to the soil you have right here and being the winemaker we want to know what are they? <laughs> Well, that's right, Rebecca. We have uh, Viognier in the field that you see behind you and around you, and that's a white grape th that has its origins in the Rhone Valley in France. And we use it actually for making three different wines. We use it for making a white wine, which is called Viognier, and it's a very exotic, dry w white wine that goes well with spicy oriental foods. And we also use it, importantly, in our Syrah program, which is a red wine, and it comprises 5 to 20 percent of our Syrah every year. And our Syrah is a very uh, prestigious wine that has won international competitions and is probably our most successful wine. And the Viognier is a part of that. And then thirdly, we make a late harvest sweet Viognier that's a delicious way to finish up a meal. We are going to go back to the actual area where you produce the wines, where you have your vats, and where you have your barrels. And what are some of the things we might be seeing today? As the I see the workers are moving away from us now. <laughs> They're fast moving, aren't they? Okay. We'll be d dumping these grapes into the press and squeezing out the white juice to ferment and use, as I described earlier. And we're also making our red wines now, which involves punching down the cap to keep the juice and the skins mixed so we can get the color and the flavor from the skins. And we'll be pumping uh, the juice and the wine from tank to tank as part of the winemaking process. 
Very interesting. Uh, Zaka Mesa Winery has almost a mystical, magical feeling about it, and uh, we're going to be having a little picnic up at your lake, and we're trying to capture some of that magical feeling that's up here at Zaka Mesa. So uh, we'll be doing that as well. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Rebecca. It's my pleasure. Rebecca, as you can see here, we have a, a beautiful piece of property that we enjoy very much here at Zaka Mesa. Um, this property was originally used by the Chumash Indians who named it. Zaka is a Chumash Indian word meaning peaceful or restful. Uh, we um, use this property and the way it was meant to be used and we have wonderful gatherings here just as the Chumash did. We often have campfires and um, try to recapture that mystical, magical feeling that they much, must have had. Um, we've also translated that feeling into our label. As you can see, our label uh, represents the four elements needed to grow grapes. We have the sun, the wind, the rain, and the mesa or table of land. So indeed, here at Zaka Mesa, uh, we do think of our, our uh, area and our surroundings as a peaceful or restful place. I'm joined now with my favorite celebrity chef, Michelle Richard. What a great taste you have. I know, I know. And we are sitting here in his restaurant in the Santa Barbara area, Citronelle, which is uh, expanding and growing into other Citronelles. And uh, where are they? Oh, we have Citronelle all over the country. We had uh, one, uh, we've been open for many, many years. Citronelle in Washington, D.C., and soon we're going to have one in Chicago. You people from Chicago, I mean, the dream's going to come true. We're going to have a restaurant in Chicago, too. Let's talk about food. Let's talk about food, but the one thing we have to talk about, the view, too. Oh, the view, the view. I think, you know what? This I is a room with a view. I was telling you earlier, it is so great to, to sit down in a restaurant with a good friend, have a good, good glass of wine. It's, uh, it's an education to yeah. relax. You, know, you see we had a great lunch. Did you like your lunch? It's just a full entertaining time. The last time I talked with you, you told me all the things that make food special to you. And I wondered if you still have the same course, feeling about it. First, Let's hear. For a chef, you have to cook with love. Mm. Now, I mean, I love to cook. It's a, it's the best profession in the world. It's so nice to cook for somebody. You deliver the food, they taste the food, and you see a smile on their face. It's so, it make, make me feel so good. One thing I do, I want to make sure they're not, they're not going to look like me. We cut down on fat, no much cream, no much butter, lots of crunch. And w another thing to, uh, I'm fighting now, too many young chefs are mixing too many ingredients. Mm -hmm. The food has to be very, very simple. If you have too many ingredients in a plate, you're going to have a headache. It's too, you're not going, to be, not going to be able to recognize the food. I know that you're not always here in Santa Barbara, and we're doing our whole show here in Santa Barbara this week, so we're really lucky that you're here with us. Well, let's, nice let's, to let's toast to that. I hope to see you soon at Citronelle. Thank you very much. But the Santa Barbara Inn is an intimate luxury property overlooking its own pool and lush gardens and the Pacific Ocean and Santa Ynez Mountains. It has 71 beautifully appointed deluxe rooms. And the award-winning Citronelle Restaurant. Citronelle is not a hotel restaurant, but a restaurant in the Santa Barbara Inn. Some of the latest records show that more than 200,000 people and tourists are coming and up to the Santa Barbara County winery area to explore the wineries and really see what it's all about up here. We've invited Dan Ganey, and I'd like you to join me now. Dan Ganey with the Ganey Vineyard uh, is right here in the Santa Barbara County area and has a beautiful tasting room up here and some very unique special features that we want to introduce you to and, and let everyone know so they can come up uh, and really enjoy your wines and see the tasting room that you've put together here. It's just beautiful. And uh, one of the things I'd like to start with is the is actually the beginning point for the tourists uh, as they go around the uh, vineyards there and they have an opportunity to see all the various grapes that you do here. W would you please describe that to us? Sure, sure. Um, 
When we were uh, designing the facility back in the 1980s, the early 80s, we uh, kind of thought that we might have a lot of visitors uh, because of our location here. And so we actually designed the uh, winery around the tour. So as people came here and visited us, uh, they'd be able to learn about the entire winemaking process from start to finish. Mm -hmm. And uh, because we've always put a lot of emphasis on the, uh, the vineyard side of the equation here, we decided to plant a uh, small vineyard just for the sake of our visitors. And that's where the tour begins. And there they can see um, a couple rows of each of the different varietals that were growing in the main vineyard. And they are trellised and pruned differently. So they can learn about those different uh, grape growing techniques. And um, at this time of year, they can taste the berries right off the vine before they finish the rest of the tour and have a chance to taste the finished wines. You're so right. Oftentimes you'll be in a wine tasting room and you're no nowhere near the actual fruit or having an opportunity to taste the, how great the grapes taste just on their own before they're made into this delicious wine that we're tasting. What are the wines you're known for here? Well, we make uh, about uh, six or seven, let me think, six different varietals right now. Um, the wines that we're really known for are the wines that comprise our limited selection program, and that's like the equivalent of our reserve program. Uh, we have a limited selection Sauvignon Blanc, a limited selection Chardonnay, a limited selection Pinot Noir, and a li limited selection Cabernet Franc. And those wines represent our best efforts in any given year. And uh, over the years, they've garnered uh, a lot of really good, you know, uh, reviews and awards for us. It seems that I saw a window full of ribbons, and those are ribbons spanning the uh, years. Yeah, yeah, we have ribbons, we have uh, scores, we have all that good stuff. <laughs> it's a panoramic view. No matter where you're standing, you can't have a bad view, and everywhere you look, you see the vineyard. It's just beautiful. Okay, step by step, some of the processes that we'll see as we go through the wine process, just quickly. Okay, well, as I said, um, we'll start at the visitor's vineyard, and everybody will have a chance to see those vines up close and uh, learn about different grape growing techniques, and that's something that uh, you just won't see at many, most wineries. After that, you'll um, continue on to the crush pad area, and um, there you will have explained to you what happens at this time of year during harvest, how the grapes are processed, and uh, from there, you'll go into the cellar and uh, learn about uh, the different functions of, of the equipment there. And then later into the barrel room, and uh, we'll explain to you our oaking regiments. And from there to um, the bottling room and bottling line. And then the tour will conclude in the bottle aging cellar. And that's a room where we store roughly a third of our production. And um, it allows us to tell the visitors about the proper ways of aging and storing wines. After that, you will have followed the grape through the entire process and be able to taste some wine. And uh, the uh, icing on the cake is when you can actually taste the wine in the tasting room. And it's just delicious. And it's a wonderful way to spend a day, isn't it? It's a growing industry up here, isn't it? Yes, it certainly is. Um, the, uh, the amount of uh, land that is being planted to new vineyards, the number of wineries that are opening up now is just uh, it's phenomenal. You're invited. Dan Ganey invites you. He invites you up to the Ganey Vineyard. It's easy to find. Uh, what uh, It's on the main freeway, 101. And then where do you go from there? 101 North? Well, I guess it depends on which way you're coming from. Well, let's say from L.A. Yeah, most of our visitors are from Southern California, and the fastest way is to take Highway 101 into Santa Barbara, and from there catch Highway 154 over San Marcos Pass. And um, it's a very pretty drive over the mountain. And that will lead you to Highway 246. And you take a left on that, and we're half a mile on the left. I think one of the first things you'll see after you turn on 246 is the Ganey Vineyard. And uh, easy enough to find and delightful way to spend a day. Well, thank you for joining us and uh, being a part of our show of the Santa Barbara Special. My pleasure. Thank you for coming. When Crustacean, Beverly Hills Restaurant, first opened a few months ago, City TV was there for one of Crustacean's famous cigar parties. Here is an interview we did with Elizabeth Ahn and her family, owners of this celebrity-filled hotspot, mixed in now with new shots of all Crustacean's celebrity friends at yet another cigar party. Not more than one week ago. Stay tuned and watch. We're toasting to the talk of the town, the party of the year. We're here at Crustacean. It's a new restaurant right here on Bedford. 
and Little Santa Monica, and Elizabeth on, who is the owner, is here with me in the midst of all this activity tonight. Elizabeth, welcome to City. Hello. It's wonderful to be here at your new restaurant, but you're not new in the restaurant business. Tell us what you've been doing. Well, Crustacean is the third restaurant that I've opened up. I have two in San Francisco, and they're both called Crustacean, and they're located in the Knob Hill area. Crustacean uh, Beverly Hills has just been open since January. And I know that you have some special dishes that you're famous for. What are they? Well, we're famous for our roasted crab. Uh, with uh, that's the aunt's famous uh, recipe, and it's prepared in our secret kitchen. And we have our royal tiger prawns flame broil with our aunt's famous garlic noodle. And what I mean secret kitchen, it is we actually have two kitchen in our restaurant, and uh, it's one kitchen is where the aunt's family traditional culinary tradition is prepared, and where nobody goes inside. And it's just family of the uh, it's just the aunt family members cook the secret recipe. No kidding, really. Uh, in all of my restaurants, that's how I have it set up. We have another kitchen where the other dishes are prepared, but in the secret kitchen, just three of our signature dishes are prepared, and it's only made by the Ahn family, and it's a, it's a recipe that's been in the family for generations and generations. You know, Elizabeth, you have created, you have your signature walkway with all the uh, fish underneath and everything. Is that typical to all your restaurants? Um, that is unique to this restaurant, uh, but not typical. It, but it will be, um, but it will look that we, we will be having in all my other restaurants. Speaking of your other restaurants, where are you opening? Uh, we're going to be opening one in Newport uh, very, very soon within this year, as well as one in Las Vegas coming up uh, towards the end of this year as well. The following year, we'll be having one in Seattle and Hawaii. <laughs> Okay, we're having a wonderful time here at Crew Station, and we've got Dean Stockwell here, and how are you doing tonight? I'm doing very well. I'm happy to be here. I see you have a cigar in your hand, and are you a cigar smoker? I've been smoking cigars for 20 years now. I have a nice uh, Thomas Hines Honduran selection here, and I'm enjoying it very much. I would say that's the perfect selection for tonight. Yes. It is a Thomas Hines party tonight. Thomas Hines party tonight. And... Uh, I'm starting, uh, tomorrow night is the premiere of a, a new show that I'm a part of called the Tony Danza Show. Oh, yes, I've heard about that. Okay, tell us, what are we going to see? Well, it's on NBC Wednesday at, at 8 o'clock, and I'm playing Tony's dad, and I think it's a wonderful show, a family show. I think people like it, and uh, the, the dad on the show smokes cigars, and so I've organized it to have Thomas Hines cigars on the show. I talked to Dean Stockwell, and I talked to Seymour Cazell, and he said, Sharon, the food's good here. Come to this party, because it's really good. Seymour, have you ever had a chance to eat at Crusation? No, tonight's the first time, and I can't get back there. You know what? Seymour, get ready to lick your lips. It's great food. You're going to love it. And ask for Elizabeth's mother. I licked my lips when I saw the owner. Don't forget the garlic noodles. The garlic noodles. It's great. We have a lot of wonderful friends here. You know? And uh, we're having a ball. We're drinking. We're smoking. And it's going to be better. I've, I've been very much involved with the animal in the, in, uh, uh, the United States. That uh, the predator who needs a home, the lions and tigers, and um, uh, at the Shambhala Preserve, we give a, a home to them. And what Tippy's doing is just uh, it's just wonderful and unbelievable. So we love to be involved with Shambhala in any way we can. I don't have to introduce him. He's Marty Angles. He's standing here with me right now. And I mean, we have been having so much. You've got, a, you've got the biggest cigar I've ever seen. In a manner of speaking, but you have to. That's I know, I know. It's a manner of speaking. Magazine. Yes. So many reasons to visit the heartland of Russia, Rostov on Don, an industrial agricultural center, to really experience the country, its history, and its food. Begin your stay by the quiet flowing Don River at the In Tourist Hotel, complete with its dining room entertainment. And rooms with a view of the Don River. Rostov on Don could be called a garden city with all its tree lined streets. Even more beautiful are the many statues and memorials associated with historical memories. So much of the life centers around the Don River.
all the summer dodges along the river, people traveling on the river, and trips to a nearby Cossack village and museum with the whole story of the Don Cossacks. Rostov on Don has its own race course and very beautiful cathedral. Peter's Landing Restaurant is right on the river with all its traditional Russian cuisine. There's so much to say about this real Russian city, but you have to see it for yourself. Yeah.